Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and coming up in today's bulletin, Broods win at Vodafone New Zealand Music Awards, Minister swoops in for health workers meetings, Motueka shipwreck debate begins again, Mo News is good news for Mo Bros cause and much, much more. Now some brother and sister duo Broods have taken away the award for Best Breakthrough Artist at the Vodafone New Zealand Music Awards 2014. They were one of three finalists along with Dopra and Sola Mio nominated for their award. Not long after receiving their TUI award, the Broods took to the stage with Georgia playing piano and singing the hauntingly stunning Bridges, a single released from their first album Evergreen launched in August this year and produced by Joel Little. Brood's album went straight to number one on the New Zealand Top 40, Top 5 in Australia, as well as the Top 40 on the US Billboard Hot 100 charts. The Broods will be embarking on a nationwide tour of New Zealand early next week and will be playing in their hometown of Nelson on February the 6th at Nelson College. Also less known local artist Opio, who is actually Motueka born Oscar Davy Rate, also won a TUI award on the night for his self-produced electronic album Meraki. Oscar was a former student of both Natamodi School and Motueka High School and is now living in Melbourne. Nelson Bay's police have been trying to establish if a person who was calling for help in a remote valley near Wakefield Thursday morning has managed to get to safety. A member of the public who was in the area alerted police after hearing a person yelling for help in dense bush in the Gordons Road area off 88 Valley. Police search and rescue teams have, had gone to the area yesterday but had found no sign of the man and are hopeful he has made his way out. There have been no reports of missing or overdue person and anyone with information that may assist should call Nelson Police on 546 3840. The Minister of Health, Jonathan Coleman, had a flying visit into Nelson to meet with health professional groups at Nelson Hospital on Thursday afternoon, drawing a few TPP protesters outside. Chrissy Small managed to ask the Health Minister, who has been in the role only six weeks, a couple of questions before he had to leave to catch his flight. How's it going? Oh, really well. I'm really enjoying it actually. So I'm on this DHB tour in Nelson today. This is the 13th DHB I've been to. So I've been getting around, you know, meeting all the people doing the work actually at the clinical coalface, getting a feel for what the issues are out there. And, you know, I think this DHB is doing uh, really well. I mean, big increases in elective surgery. Uh, I've been through the ED here today. Um, that's performing very well. So, you know, I've really been impressed with what I've seen here in Nelson. Well, as a patient myself, I have been very impressed that I've been on the receiving end of their treatment and they are excellent, so they're, they're doing a great job. Excellent. Look, I think you've got very dedicated doctors and nurses and the whole allied health uh, professions here in Nelson. And, uh, you know, I think what you're saying is very much reflective of the feedback I'm getting from patients around the country. Right. Now, uh, is there going to be any increases in funding for elective surgeries or is that going to be cut? No, uh, we promised $110 million over the next four years extra for elective surgery. Uh, there's also another $50 million going into joint and bone initiatives. We've done an extra 44,000 surgeries uh, compared to what Labor were doing when they were in power. So actually, there's more money going into health all the time, more operations faster cancer uh, care, more kids being immunised and we're getting, in terms of the objective feedback from the public, uh, we're getting the feedback that the health system's going in the right direction. Well that's good news for a lot of residents here, of course N Nelson is kind of a retirement village for a lot of people, it's the, it's, so elective surgery is on a high list for the elderly here, so they'll be pleased to hear that. Now. Um, one, just slightly off topic, but yep. with the TPP being being negotiated, how will Pharmac be, uh, how will that be affected? The New Zealand government's been very clear that, uh, clear that Pharmac's extremely important to New Zealand and it's something that's not up for negotiation. Right, so people won't be paying extra for, for their medications? Uh, no, nothing to do with the TPP, absolutely. Oh really? Oh that's good news. <laughs> there you go. Now Jonathan, have you been over to Marlborough yet? No, I will be going there at some stage, so I haven't been there as Minister of Health but I'm very much looking forward to going to Wairau Hospital. I imagine that may be sometime in the new year. But the important thing was to get to every district health board uh, and of course, you know, uh, Marlborough is, is part of this uh, Nelson Marlborough District Health Board region. Yeah. Okay, and okay. where are you off to after this? Uh, where are we going? We're going up to Auckland actually. I'm going to a sports journalism dinner tonight, so the Sir Terry McLean, TP McLean Sports Awards. Oh, yeah, well, so it should be interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Concerns raised by Professor of Law Jane Kelsey from leaked documents are that Pharmac would not be able to negotiate bulk discounts for medicines, would have to give detailed reasons to the drug companies about every purchasing decision, and give pharmaceutical companies the right to appeal those decisions. Plus, patents could be extended for generic medicines, and longer control over data for new generation cancer treatments means they will be super expensive for longer. So it's extremely good news to hear the new Health Minister guarantee that none of this will happen. The Motawaka shipwreck of the Janie Seddon is still to be removed after the Motawaka Community Board say they have received plenty of positive feedback about the boat's removal. Board Chairman Paul Hawkes has come out stating that there is an issue of safety around the wreck, which has been raised at numerous meetings. He said that they have received 100% positive feedback regarding the ship's removal. Tasman District Council have told the Community Board that it is not the Council's responsibility to remove the ship and are unwilling to foot the bill. Chrissy Small spoke to the Motueka Community Board Chairman Paul Hawkes about wanting the wreck removed. Now Paul, um, this week in The Guardian it's been mentioned that the Community Board is seeking to have the Janie Seddon shipwreck removed. Correct, yes. What are the safety concerns? Um, one of the biggest issues are that um, there are signs which are um, situated about 100 to 130 metres away um, which basically say that um, no entry, no access because of um, risk of injury, that sort of thing. Um, the biggest concern is that kids don't see them, kids don't read them, um, they don't take much care or a responsibility when it comes to the safety side of things and i um, quite concerned that some serious injury could be sustain sustained now. Uh, the biggest issue is that it's a, a rusting hulk and there are just numerous um, sharp edges and sharp um, components which are just jagged everywhere plus the instability of the internal structure. There's not a lot of the internal structure left, it's mainly just all cramped down on the bottom <coughs> in the base. Um, of the of the Hulk, and um, yeah, just seriously concerned. Serious concerns have been raised from locals about the um, yeah the credibility of actually keeping it. Right now, um, okay, Paul, has there been any known injuries from children being on this boat? I've I've actually been told of seven or eight. But none of them are reported to council because parents suddenly realise they're not meant to be there anyway. So um, and not and not a lot officially gets said about it. Um, it's all covertly behind the scenes that it goes on. And uh, anybody that's contacted me about it, I've told them that if they have any concerns, directly, direct straight to the council straight away. Um, even though they're not meant to be there, kids are kids, especially. Um, you know, they're not going to be held accountable. But um, if they're injured, it, it becomes a serious safety factor. So. Um, it's like unreported instances to the police. If the police don't know about them, they can't act on them. Um, likewise with council, and I know that we've created some pretty serious debate out there, often controversial debate, um, but at least it is at last creating some healthy debate about it. And um, we've we've um, acted on, I've had dozens of people that have stopped and talked to me about it, thinking it's a wise move. Personally, I've had not one person speak to the negative of it, but now, of course, we've created a bit of a, a, a furore out there and um, we're hearing all the negative aspects side of it, which is great because nothing's set in concrete and the board is totally open-minded. We've made a, made a recommendation. The biggest issue is that it, it doesn't come being removed uh, without a cost. You need a resource because the actual removal fees for, for taking it out. Um, and council have basically said it's not their responsibility, it's a dock responsibility because it's below the mean high water tide mark. Um, I, my personal belief is I don't believe dock will have the funds available to do it either in, in the short term. Um, but the debate is stimulating some very, very healthy comments. Um, as I say, nothing set in concrete. The board could just as easily turn around and say because of public outcry, um, we've changed our decision. Um, right. uh, working on, we were working on direct positives from the public, um, not just myself, uh, all the other six members of the board um, exactly the same, uh, now, not one negative response to it, so right. that's why we acted the way we did. Of course, now, uh, and, and it would seem that the support would be for to, rem to remove it, but when you get out there in the community and, and you've, you've got adults who have grown up with it being there when they were kids, 
you're talking about an iconic bit of history there in, in Montevideo. Exactly. If, it is an iconic bit of history, but it's like anything with sentiment. Where does it stop? And I, when it becomes just a, a hulking wreck in the in the sand, does it become an eyesore? Does it become um, a negative? Um, it's just a question of, <laughs> excuse the pun, drawing a line in the sand and deciding enough is enough. And I guess um, it's, and, it's, um, it's all and, in the eye of the um, beholder I, as well too, Paul, because you've, you've got people who use it as a photographic study, you've got people who oh, stop exactly, and have yes. picnics and look out over it and wonder about its yep. life. Um, you've got you've got a lot of. Unfortunate um, part is the unfortunate part is it doesn't actually have any historical classification. Um, most things of, of important significance have a historical classification. The Janie Seddon has no classification at all at the moment. It, it's really just a local icon, um, and I don't mean that um, in a negative sense. I was brought up around it. I used to play in it um, exactly the same, and um, it would have been nice years ago to have um, some sort of restoration project which would hold it where it was, not let it just hulk away to a, a skeleton. Um, it's just quite sad to think that it's got to where it is now without something being done previously. Yeah. Well, I, I have no idea how safe or unsafe it is, it just um, without going aboard it and having a climb around it myself. But, um, you know, I can fully understand your concerns. Some would say these days we're becoming a bit too PC with, with objects, um, which have included the whale down in Tahuna Nui Playground. Um, you know, there were exactly, people... that, that was one of the iconic things in the playground. Yeah, so, you know, we, we kind of have to, as you say, draw a line. And we, where do we draw, draw the line? I mean, you know, if You're kids right. who can't read science, well, they should be under parental supervision anyway. Um, and uh, there are always going to be mischievous kids doing mischievous things that can read signs. So it's a, it's a tricky that's, debate, isn't that's it? What makes, that's what makes life so, so unique, isn't it? Everybody's different. Yeah, different. yeah. Um, and, and the other thing is, too, that um, we do, I'm, um, I'm trying to spearhead a project to um, restore the old wharf, um, the historic wharf down there. Um, so that is another offshoot of it as well, that area we're trying to, um, to restore back to some semblance of its past beauty. I'm not saying that I'm not using the, uh, the shell of the Janie said and saying it's not beautiful. Um, I believe it has a significant part. But as I say, I was voted in with a majority vote, and, well, not the majority vote, but I was voted in by the public. I listen to the public and I normally vote with the public. So um, if enough people say, hey, no, turn, turn the ship around and back it back, then you know, turn the bus around and back it back, that's exactly what we'll do. Right. Um, oh, and I, majority, majority outcry rules, basically. Yeah. Okay, so nothing set in concrete at this stage, Paul? No, nothing definitely, because as I say, we've, we've sent a letter to Doc asking their stance on... Um, ownership basically because somebody must own it. I know who used to own it but that's long gone. You can't ask somebody historically years ago to, to ask for its removal. Morrison's Cafe was the scene of Movember Mobro meeting on Monday and I went along to find out the personal motivation of people who have joined the Mobro's movement for men's cancer awareness and to catch up on how the monetary donations are coming along. We've had a few calls that this story may be a little furry around the edges, so please no moaning aloud about this momentous story. We're down here at the Morrison Street Cafe talking to some of my Mo Bro buddies, and then we'll ask them a few questions. And uh, we've got Mike Ward here. What inspired you to be a Mo Bro, there, Mike? Actually, it was Andy over here asked me, and he's such a hunk with that Mo, and I thought I'm, I want to be a hunk too. <laughs> So, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> and must say, you're looking pretty hunkish with that mow on. Well, thank you, Graham. That's very kind. <laughs> and um, how about you, Mike? I know for me, the biggest challenge in the mornings is not shaving it off when I'm in a rush. How about for you? What's the biggest challenge of having growing the mow? Well, I suppose it's uh, trying to keep the wife happy for the month and just assure her that it's just there for a month and it will be gone then. Uh, I've got to remember not to come across too seedy because the moustache does do powerful things to a man. <laughs> and a woman. <laughs> and a woman, definitely. <laughs> what say, a, a kiss without a moustache is like an egg without salt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. And um, 
Sean, uh, how's it all going? How's the donations going? We've got the gum boot here. Have you got any other promotions going on? Uh, yeah, the gum boot's going well. We had eight boots out last year. We put the call out to uh, more businesses to participate in the uh, fundraiser this year, and we got a nice donation from Warehouse um, of 30 boots, and they all went out, and we had more requests for more, so we'll see if we get more boots on the ground uh, next year as well. Uh, we'd also like to invite any of the MoBros out there who are participating. Um, come on down to the Vic on the 30th from 3 to 5. We're having a little bit of a fun mustache party and a uh, continuation of the fundraiser for the local hospice here. Excellent. That's fantastic. Hey, thanks very much, guys, and have a good Mo Movember. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Mo out. Three regional air services have been axed, but what does that really mean for Nelson travellers? The airline announced this month that the direct link flight from Nelson to Palmerston North will be suspended from April 2015. However, there was positive news regarding increased capacity and cost of last minute fares, according to Nelson Mayor Rachel Reese, who acknowledged that losing a national link is obviously disappointing, but welcomed the news of a reduction in regional air fares across the country. She said the gotta go domestic fares will have a significant impact on our city, making it more affordable for people from around the country to attend our amazing events. Weekend trips to Sunny Nelson will be more on people's agendas. The question has to be asked, how will these gotta go fares really help Nelson and other regions attract visitors, as they can only be purchased 90 minutes before departure at the price of $169 one way, and only to 20 regional airports, excluding the four biggest centres. We went out and asked those people on the street how often they would fly out of Nelson and whether the flight costs were reasonable. How often do you fly in and out of Nelson? Oh, pretty frequently. I live here, but I often fly uh, up to Auckland to see my daughter and to Wellington for business meetings. Um, about every two or three months to visit family in Wellington. Oh, three or four times a year. Um, three to four times a year because I'm a uni student. Oh, several times uh, a year, I suppose. The average price of a flight from Nelson to Wellington one way is $109. Do you consider flights too expensive? Not really. Um, uh, the, I mean, the alternative is even more expensive, which is road and ferry. Um, so, no, I'm pretty happy with the, with the current rate. Yeah, lower the prices, it'll be better. Um, well, if you have to go on a certain day, it probably is too expensive. Uh, but I'm on an, uh, an email alert with Air New Zealand, and uh, they, they send me emails when the, uh, when the price of the flights drops below a certain level. Flying is very expensive around the North and South Island. Yes, afraid so. Absolutely, from Nelson mm. anywhere and back to Nelson, yes. Uh, I think if you get onto it early enough, it's a relatively good price actually. You get the $69 tickets, it's not that much at all. Public submissions have hit an all time record high on the funding and governance options for the proposed Waimea Community Dam. With 760 submissions received, Tasman Mayor Richard Kempthorne said that it was an excellent response and that the proposals have certainly created a number of conversations in the community. Mary Ellen O'Connor from the Waimea Irrigators and Water Users Group came to the studio to talk about the costs and concerns of the proposed Lee Valley. Mary Ellen, public submissions have had an all-time high with 760 submissions. Um, they've, I've, I understand that the dam is already They've already spent $5 million on the dam up to this point. Do you think it's a little bit late in the day to be asking people whether they want this dam now? It certainly would seem that way. Um, we at Waimea Irrigators and Water Users have been pressing for a very long time for them to do a poll of their, of their ratepayers and of their water consent holders to see what people uh, want. And uh, now they are finding out in no uncertain terms that the vast majority of the uh, people submitting do not in fact want it. Um, that, but as we say, we feel it's been a little bit uh, cart before the horse in terms of the process. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a bit that way. And um, any idea that, you know, you've spent, they've spent $5 million, where would have that money gone to? Because there's nothing to show for it as such. No, no, that's another interesting, um, it seems to have taken a long, both a long time and a lot of money to come to a decision. There have been um, numerous um, feasibility studies, site investigations, scientific reports, hydrology reports, um, all, all manner of investigations have been carried out 
um, which again we feel, well perhaps it may have made a lot more sense to go and talk to the people that um, operate the water consents or, or the, you know, the ratepayers who are going to be hit by this. Out of the 760 uh, submissions, 150 of them want to submit in, in person. So what do you think most of these submitters will be wanting to know about? The very large majority of both the submissions and the people wanting to speak in person will be saying that the dam is unaffordable. It is completely unaffordable under either option one or option two and that they do not like the governance model under either option one or op option two. I probably need to say this, this particular submission we're referring to was all about the funding and the governance of the dam and that is why there has been suddenly this um, outpouring of protest because uh, let's say the um, push has come to shove in terms of the figures about what ratepayers will be charged. So people have suddenly woken up and realised this and those people will be telling them that the dam is completely unaffordable. We have got people whose rates are going to increase by either 390% um, under option one or 504% under option two. Laughable if it weren't what they're actually writing down and talking about. Yeah, no, that's scary, all right. And I mean, it just came out yesterday that Nelson City Council is, is um, looking, at fu looking at funding the dam as well, and that our administration has come out saying that we should, that Nelson ratepayers should fund the dam as well. Yes, well that'll be a very interesting one to put to Nelson ratepayers who are still paying off their own Mai Tai dam. They may not be keen to be contributing to the um, $100 million Lee Valley dam as well. So we'll see, we'll leave, that, we'll leave that with them and find out in due course I dare say. Thanks very much for that Marianne. Thanks for having me on. On the 11th of December the Tasman Council will be receiving a recommendation from the CEO on the affordability of the dam in its present form. This council meeting is open to the public with people being encouraged to attend. To see the consultation process questions that have been collated along with responses, go on the website waimeacommunitydam.co.nz. Food for Families is the brainchild of Martin Reading who saw a need within the Nelson community and decided to lead by example to help improve the lives of people in his community. Food for Families has premises in Victory Square where good nutritious meals are prepared that also supplies a food for families in Stoke and is looking at starting a mobile kitchen to be used in other areas that have people struggling to meet their bills and put food on the table. People who are not lucky enough to be a rock star in our rock star economy. Martin spoke to us about Food for Families and what he is up to. Sure, we founded Food for Families last October. We came into the Nelson area and saw that there was a need amongst the families living here a lot of families are struggling, here and in many parts of New Zealand of course. So seeing that need we went about trying to um, come up with a solution to that. Seeing a lot of excess produce around the area, a lot of um, you know roadside stalls and um, growers with excess produce, we gathered that produce, um, turned it into nice healthy nutritious meals and then uh, fed the families with those. We do that through the community centres, here in Victory Community Centre and also in the Tahuna Nui Community Centre. Oh, really? yeah. So um, we're feeding about 100 people a week at this stage, a hot, nutritious meal. Wow, that's fantastic and, and good job. Um, you've only been going since October. Have you found that it's, the, um, it's increased in demand for this kind of service? Yes, it is increasing. Um, more and more families are struggling. Um, some of it's circumstantial. You know, families may be going alright for some period of time and then something comes up in their lives and causes them to struggle, you know, divorce or health issues or whatever it may be. And there's other families who are just, you know, struggling, ongoing. Yeah. So um, the numbers have increased and I think will continue to increase. Um, in America they're, they're, they're enforcing laws that you're not allowed, actually allowed to feed the poor, they're making it illegal, they're arresting people. Are you a bit worried about these laws against the people coming into New Zealand? Um, I certainly am not. <laughs> I think the New Zealand government and the people of New Zealand are wanting to help people who are uh, struggling in this country and um, we certainly wouldn't like to see them working against, against that principle. Excellent. Hey, thanks very much and all the good work that you do. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. There's Christmas savings for everyone this week at New World. Get a Telegraph cucumber, a lettuce and a pre-pack of tomatoes, all three for $5. Personal laundry powder is now $9.99, plus anchor butter is a super low $2.99. It must be Christmas. 
from small cars to trucks to commercial vehicles. We have all the leading brands of tyres, including Bridgestone. A local professional qualified team serve the entire region 24-7. Tasman Tire Treads, serving Richmond, Motuaka and Golden Bay. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. The majority of information in our life comes to us through our vision. With only one set of eyes to last our lifetime, it's important that you look after them. For over 20 years, Carrington Eye Care has led the way in providing the Nelson Tasman region with professional eye care. Our team are committed to providing you and your family with the highest standard of eye care. As part of this commitment at Carrington Eye Care, we recommend Crizal lenses. Grizel is a revolutionary lens which repels dust and fingerprints. This means it's easier to clean and stays cleaner longer. Visit us at our Nelson Richmond and Practices and ask about our Grizel Satisfaction Guarantee. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonne covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Sit and Be Fit is on at the Victory Community Centre Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10am at the Victory Community Church, 238 Upper Vanguard Street. School terms only. Fun while you get fitter, work at your level. For more information, please contact Shirley on 547 1433 or 021 121 8023. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Discover the Belgrove Tavern just 20 minutes south of Richmond on State Highway 6. A restaurant, functions, weddings, barbecue, garden bar with lots of room for kids. Come and see us. From small cars to trucks to commercial vehicles, we have all the leading brands of tyres including Bridgestone. A local professional qualified team serve the entire region 24-7. Tasman Tire Treads, serving Richmond, Motuaka and Golden Bay. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonne covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Nelson Tire Centre. Great prices, great service. 
buy your own Bryford trailer, all types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries.